Here we go. This episode of Juice Crew Radio is brought to you by Try Best, making healthy living easy. Well, hello, I'm Steve Prusak. Welcome to the show. We've got Karen Hartglass here, 30-year vegan, combined science with practical knowledge from real life experience, lecturing about the healing benefits of a plant-based diet. She's co-founder of the nonprofit Responsible Eating and Living, or Real. We'll hear all about her and all the work she's doing and more. So stay tuned. Get yourself a juice, some tea, or some water. We'll be back right after this with Karen Hartglass. Hi, welcome back to the show. I'm Steve for a second. It's so great to be with you. We've got Karen Hartglass with her. I want to bring her on right now. She's been on Dr. Oz, Geraldo at Large, 2020 CNN, uh, hosts the weekly It's All About Food show on the Progressive Radio Network over with our friend Gary Noel. We love the work they're doing there. Let's welcome to the show right now, Karen Hartglass. Hey, everybody. Karen, I can go on and on about your bio and all the incredible work you're doing. And I want you to share your story. So, Starting with how you overcame uh, advanced ovarian cancer, it's really a, a startling story. So can you share that and how you got into all this? Sure. Well, I have a lot of stories. I can't all tell them today. <laughs> we'll get through as many as we could, though, I promise. Right. So can I back up a little? Because the cancer story is important because not just because I had advanced ovarian cancer, stage 3C with a 10 to 20% survival rate, and I lived instead of died. Uh, but um, I was a vegan and I was on a healthy path. And I was one of those folks who got a bad disease who thought she was invulnerable. So uh, when I was about 15 years old, I decided I wanted to be a vegetarian. I met someone in class who said something about being a vegetarian and all of a sudden the light went off and I realized I didn't want to eat. I realized who was on my plate and I didn't want to be a part of that anymore. And, it took a while be before I became a real vegetarian because I didn't even know what a real vegetarian was at 15 years old. That was a long time ago without internet and not much information available to me. Uh, but I stopped eating red meat and chicken. And then along the way, I stopped eating fish. And, and that was when I went to um, Epcot Center in, in Disney World when it first opened up and they had this food for future exhibit. And I saw these big white tanks with fish in them. And I thought if if this is how we have to raise fish, then I'm not eating them. <laughs> and that was my, uh, my Finding Nemo moment. Fish are your friends, not food. And then uh, I was 30 when I finally gave up eggs and dairy. And then I was 48 when I was diagnosed with advanced ovarian cancer. And at this point, mm. I was executive director of Earth Save International, which was founded by John Robbins. And I was connected to a lot of alternative health experts and practitioners and I was trying to do what everybody was saying I should do. And then my belly just started getting bigger and I thought I had a fast growing uterine fibroids, premenopausal. I read all about it in the internet. It all made sense. And then I had surgery, which I was really trying to avoid, but I got to a point where I couldn't. And uh, I woke up and they said, you have ovarian cancer and you need chemo. So what I realized months, months later was I started as a teenager with a problem and my menstrual cycle was very heavy and long and I didn't know if that was right or wrong. It was the only body I knew that was doing what it was doing and nobody really wanted to talk about it. <laughs> and uh, so I started with a problem and then to aggravate the problem, there are more people talking about this now, but I used to use three super tampons at a time loaded with dioxin. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Most people don't even know it today, but I got this tripper super giant dose of dioxin as a teenager and as a young adult. And I feel like that aggravated a problem that I already had. That first problem was either environmental or DNA or maybe a combination in my diet. And uh, because I don't think cancer is caused by one thing and I don't think it's cured by one thing. Mm. So there are all these different factors. And uh, then by the time I was 48, um, you know, around 50 years old is when your body is like transitioning and all kinds of interesting things they say happens around that time. And so this was my interesting thing. And I had cancer. Wow. And then, I mean, especially with everything we hear in Earth Save and John Robbins in the book and everything that we were learning about prevention and like, this is the way to go. And would you say you're eating a healthy vegan diet? Were you getting the fruits and vegetables? Because a lot of vegans will do the comfort food. 
I, I was on a relatively healthy diet. I did occasionally have treats like cakes and cookies. It, I wasn't a big junk food eater, but I would have them sometimes. What's interesting, and I apologize to any raw foodists out there, but I think this was a part of my, of my imbalance. I was a raw vegan for two years, 2004, 2005. And I would eat a lot of mono meals, a lot of fruit. And I have this kind of theory, and I, I have no proof, just my talking with my body. Uh-huh. Is that well, my yeah, body intuition. Kind of, There's something to be said for intuition, you know? Yeah, my body had encapsulated the toxins and protected them from the rest of me. And then as I went raw, all of that stuff was kind of like wearing away. And then I was eating so much fruit that maybe all that extra fruit fed the sugar for the cancer. I know there's a lot of studies now that say eating whole fruit is is better than eating juice and refined sugars and it's not the same but i was eating a lot a lot of fruit i would eat a watermelon for lunch you know <laughs> and then my belly started growing so i went back to eating some cooked foods and i was trying all kinds of things and nothing was working and then finally i had the surgery but i was very lucky because number one i, I think if i hadn't been on this path i would have been dead a long time ago i just know it my body was keeping, my diet was keeping me strong and healthy. I was losing tons of blood for decades and I was never tired. Uh, I wasn't tired until, um, until the last few months when it was really out of control. Right. But I, I, um, but you're I was probably four, anemic, right? I was anemic the last five or six months and I was off and on anemic for the two years before my surgery. So there were clues, but nobody really knew. Interesting and a good point to bring up because there's no panacea, no, you know, where people think if I give up my meat and dairy and eggs, then it's going to be the cure all and I'm never going to get sick. I mean, I've, I lost a really good friend of mine to cancer who was hardcore vegan, mostly raw, juicing, and, you know, died of cancer and his, you know, at the age of 40. Yeah, well, what I've learned is, as I mentioned before, cancer is not caused by one thing. Right. And the environment can have a tremendous impact. So for me, it was definitely the environment and the stuff I was putting in my body that wasn't food related. I was just putting poison from a tampon in my body. But um, there's a lot more to it. And the, the healing part, there's a lot more to it. I think emotional issues have a, play a big part. And I consider myself a very stable together person. But when I was heading into my third surgery in less than 15 months, um, I thought, okay, I really got to do everything here. And I'm ad I've addressed the nutrition and I'm meditating and I'm juicing every day and I'm eating as many green foods and mushrooms as I can. And I'm taking the big supplements, turmeric and concentrated broccoli sprouts and everything. Um, I, I said, I have to address the emotional component. And I had a friend in Canada who did Reiki and some neuro-linguistic programming and, and a variety of techniques. And I went to see him for a weekend and he was fantastic. I, when I first met him through email, I could feel energy coming out of his emails. It's a crazy thing, but this guy has a talent for energy and not all Reiki masters are any good. This guy was so good. Uh -huh. and, uh, he did a number of things with me that brought out some issues that I never really thought mattered. And so I oh. faced them and accepted them and I moved on. And I don't know if that made a difference, but I was going to hit everything that I could. Right. And stress, they say, is a big thing too. Were you under a lot of stress? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. You know, life is stressful. So you went the sur you did some surgery and then you you know you changed your diet at that point, right? You tried to get more of the greens in? Yeah, I tweaked it. I improved it. So I'm lucky because um, I'm connected to a lot of great people and Joel Furman is a friend and colleague of mine and he was fantastic during that period. Um, and he helped evaluate the supplements I was taking and I was totally into his 
his line of diet at that point in time. I wasn't eating any refined anything. And I was definitely eating as many greens as I could and the mushrooms, all the key foods and juicing every day. And I, that- Yay, made, we love hearing that. Juicing every day. I juiced every day for over 10 years. <laughs> uh, and- Wow. Yeah. It was my medicine, my yeah. lifestyle. So, so you were doing the nutrient dense books, Dr. Joel Furman, he's our medical advisor for our brand. And so I'm, I'm you're, you're hitting all the checks for me. I love it. <laughs> like, all right, glad we got her on the show. No, but I, I love his protocols. I mean, the nutrient dense and the G bombs, were you doing all the, don't you want to live forever? <laughs> I love when he says that. So you were, you, you were, you were strictly following it, but you say were. So now I'm wondering, now we're oh. all wondering, you were following his protocols. Did you get away from that? And where are you now on the journey? Um, I'm minusculely occasionally away from that, but not really. I mean, my days are kale salads, kale smoothies. I don't juice every day, but I juice frequently. And yeah. everything's green. Mushrooms are always there. Onions are always there. I eat beans. I rarely eat bread. I rarely eat pasta. If you want to know what I'm eating, actually, I have a daily blog where I post everything I'm eating, and I have over 1,260 posts. Oh, well, that's, that's the way to do it. And we've got the link we're going to put under the show notes. What's the best? Uh, what, it's at responsibleeatingandliving.com. Got it. Responsibleeatingandliving.com. We're going to have a link to that under the show notes too. Yeah. So, you know, I travel and I just came back from um, being the musical director for Into the Woods for a theater company in San Jose. And my partner and I, my partner Gary, he was the stage director. I did the music. And we were living in different places that weren't necessarily ideal for food. But I, you know, we did the best we can. We did eat out sometimes. And when you eat out, there are always compromises. You do the best you yeah. can. Here. But you can see it all at my blog. I tell the truth. It's fun. There's, nothing, there's I, everything's there. I'm going to check that out. And, and actually people in the chat room are asking the website. I actually put it in there for you guys. But if you're listening on the radio, it's again, it's responsibleeatingandliving.com. And we'll have a link to that under the show notes at Juice Guru Radio. And this is a lot of fun. And we're here on Juice Guru Radio, of course, as you know, and live with Karen Hartglass to our community at Juice Guru Rewind and hearing all about the journey of vegan for 30 years, ups and downs along the path, the journey to get there and where it led and what we're doing now. Because I'll tell you, you know, if you're not watching the video, you can't see Karen. I mean, you're, you're a picture of vibrancy and health. And, and I'm, right? I'm 60. Wow. Wow. And I, I like Neither to say, and I, and I can kick. <laughs> yeah, that, that gives us, that gives, you know, it's the new 60. 60 is the new 40, I think, for real. Yeah. Uh, you know, looking at Karen, we can see that to be true. So you're doing something right. And, and it's not going to be the vegan junk foods that gets us there. It's got to be the healthy uh, living yeah. and all the other things you're talking about too. Because it's not just what we eat and on our plate. That's part of it. But you're talking about the energy work and the overcoming stress and all the other things that, that. Now, you've got tips for getting more greens in the diet. Now, our, our listeners, they're getting the juices in, maybe the daily juicing. Maybe they're thinking, yeah, maybe I should eat more plant foods, and, and this is a good idea, but how do we get more greens in? What were some of the tips you had for that? Right. Well, again, at responsibleeatingandliving.com, we have lots of recipes, and I think we even have a category for greens, but the, they're the basics, like the juicing and the smoothies. And I make these super smoothies. They're, I, sometimes I call them sludgies because they're oh, very- yeah, I, I'd love to hear, or do we have to go to the site to look? Cause I want to look at that. Cause I'm, I'm a, I love juicing, but I love smoothies too. So, so what I do is I take an entire head of kale and I put it in the juicer. I mean, no, in the Vitamix. And I add maybe a cup of water just to blend it all up. And then I add stuff to it to make it palatable. But I've got to I've got to get you a DynaPro. Have you heard of these new blenders that you suck the air out and it doesn't get oxidized? I'm telling no, you, no. like they did a side-by-side -side comparison of how it doesn't oxidize. So it, it'll stay good for three days. And it's more nutrient-rich. I've been using my DynaPro like every day now. It's you the can, next level. You can send me whatever you want and I will gratefully accept it and <laughs> use it. <laughs> Let's see what we could do. 
I was Diane, and Diane was saying, "Wow, you look great." You know, yes, thank you. Were you. Saying, I, but can, I'm going to talk more about greens, but can I add one more thing about my cancer treatment? I didn't know we weren't complete. Please. Okay. So there are a bunch of people out there, and I have a great deal of respect for them, um, that healed their cancer without conventional Western means. I am not one of them. I had three major surgeries, and I had two rounds of chemotherapy, two rounds of four-month each long rounds of chemotherapy. Um, I did the chemo because I consulted with Dr. Joel Furman, who doesn't necessarily promote using chemo, but when you have a really aggressive cancer and changing your diet isn't, isn't going to work fast enough when it's really, really aggressive. And we're all individuals, and I made the choice to do the chemo. And the first time, I did the standard chemo cocktail for ovarian cancer. And um, fortunately, unfortunately, it didn't work for me. So I had a little residual tumor left from the surgery. My surgeon said he got everything, but he didn't. And everybody said the chemo would get it, and it didn't. And then um, my surgeon said, oh, we'll have more surgery, and it'll be easy, and we'll get it out. And he looked around for three hours, and then he told me I was cancer-free, the scans were wrong, there's nothing in there. It turns out, I don't even think he looked at my films, because he operated in the wrong place. He gave me a big new scar that, that wasn't where the tumor was. And for the next three months, I felt really bad. And then I ended up finding better surgeons when the scan showed that the tumor was now bigger. And uh, they took it out. And then I went for more chemo, but this time I had chemo sensitivity testing so that they tested fresh tumor on chemo cocktails to see which ones would respond to my kind of cancer. And what I want to say is John Robbins led me to Keith Block, who runs the Block Center outside of Chicago. And 12 years ago, it was really innovative because they did integrative cancer treatment with chemotherapy. I had massages and they offered meditation and, and a huge list of supplements. I was spending like $800 a month on supplements, but it made a big difference. I loved going there. I never had a bad time. I flew to Chicago and back to New York. And then I was doing a musical in California. I flew from California to Chicago. I felt good. I mean, I felt a little tired. I never had any uh, nausea or, or vomiting and I had really aggressive chemo. So sometimes it's necessary. I don't know if it made the difference, but I'm here. I mean, Howard, you know, Robin Quivers from the Howard Stern show, the, the sidekick, you know about her journey? Yes. So she did conventional and changed her diet, went vegan. Yep. And, you know, it was a combination, but had tons of energy throughout the chemo because of the diet, because she was eating plant foods and, you yeah. know. It all matters. Yeah. Yeah, well. Okay, so back so to what goes in that smoothie? So you said a whole head of kale. <laughs> yeah, and then I add whatever I've got to make it palatable. So I might add a banana. I'll definitely add berries, frozen berries. Sometimes I add a little peanut butter mm. uh, or some raw nut or seed. If I have a little coconut milk, uh, I might add that or some almond milk. Now, I don't buy the commercial almond milks and coconut milks. I tend to make them myself. No nice. added sugar. I drink soy milk. That's just soybeans and water. No, no added sugar. And uh, depending on what I have around, sometimes I'll put maca in there. Sometimes I'll put flax seeds and chia seeds, that kind of thing. But it's thick. And what I always tell people about smoothies. So do you, you use water as the base? Like, or are you yeah. adding and then no, add coconut I'll milk? I'll use water. With... I'll use yeah. water water and then add coconut milk or almond milk or something yeah. to the water or do you stay with just coconut water or just almond milk or do you mix it up i mix it up it's never the same ah <laughs> that's the key isn't it but the key is to sip it and chew it not to guzzle it and it lasts a long time and you digest in the mouth and you get everything you can out of it that's why we get you the blender, and that way it's not oxidized, so it doesn't, you know, when we cut our apple and it gets brown, this way it doesn't oxidize it. And they did a comparison, actually, at Expo West. I was at TriBest. We work with them, and 
Um, they had blended just apples, green apples, in a regular blender and in, you know, oxidized, you know, using okay. the vacuum seal. And after three days, the, you know, the conventional blender was just brown, sop. And then the, the, you know, the vacuum seal was this vibrant green. Like it really works when wow. we take the air out of the canister and blend it. It's the next level. And when we're making our smoothies, I'm just excited because I've been using it every day. I'm like, wow, this is just amazing. I could taste the difference and feel the difference. And then, so there's raw greens in salads, obviously. And there's so many different ways to make a salad and what you can put on it and what kind of dressings you can use. Our dressings are typically a raw nut or seed that we blend with lemon juice or a vinegar. And we might add some other things to it to give it flavor, but we have, we have sunflower seed dressings and pumpkin seed dressings and almond dressings and uh, they're all delicious. And you can get those recipes at responsibleeatingandliving.com. I love it because, you know- And it's free. Some people just, you know, pick up the store shelf, you know, with all the additives and the preservatives and the salt and the sugar and the, to make it yourself like that natural and so easy, right? Yeah, right. Sometimes we'll use collard greens as a wrap. Mm. The, the raw collard greens a little rough, so we tend to steam them. And then we might have a bunch of different things, grains and beans and sauces, and we'll roll them up in the collard green. Or sometimes we'll do it in a romaine leaf. The, the green leaves are great for wraps. Uh, I've thrown kale in my corn muffins when I've made corn muffins. Uh, I always try and green up everything that I can. Uh, Fun. There's, yeah, there's a lot of things. Of course, greens can go in soups, stews. Um, my partner, Gary, we, have, we both cook, and we both have our own different styles of cooking. So he has that more uh, manly food stuff, you know, the meat and potatoes, only they're vegan. <laughs> so he likes to make, um, what does he call it? He calls it a Joe's special because in California in San Jose is original Joe's. I don't know if you've ever been there and they had a Joe's special, which was eggs and meats and who knows whatever. Oh but yeah, homemade, eat it Joe's. I see that. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, it's been there a long time, but he'll make it with um, kale or spinach and some tofu, and the batter is like a chickpea flour and water batter, some herbs and spices. Sometimes he'll add a little tempeh, like a tempeh bacon taste. Uh, we don't buy them in the store, we kind of make our own. And he'll make this uh, frittata, or like an omelette kind of frittata thing. And it's loaded with green greens, and it's, it's fantastic. It's a great brunch. Oh, that's We're nice. We're always cooking. That sounds easy too. Do you put it in like a uh, stainless steel cast iron or a ca cast use, iron kind yeah, of? Yeah, we use cast iron and nice. uh, it can go from the stove top into the oven to kind of bake it up a little bit. It's really fantastic. Did you do any other cleansing, you know, water cleansing, juice cleansing, anything like that on your health journey? Well, that's an interesting question. I did do an all water, three week, all water fast in 2000, which was before I was diagnosed with cancer. And I did it with doc under Dr. Furman's supervision. I think it was in 2000 or 1999 or somewhere along there. And I loved it, but I still got cancer. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, that's the thing. We don't know everything. Yeah. Right, we don't know everything. So we I like to say though, yeah. as long as you're alive, there's hope. I mean, I would think doing that water fast, there were changes, right? You must have had, you know, you must I, have. Yeah, I lost 20 pounds. I uh, looked great. It was fun. <laughs> People think I'm nuts. It was fun. <laughs> I loved how it slowed me down. And there was this um, outdoor mall near the fasting house. I would walk there. And as I walked at my own pace, everybody else was like this in front of me and around me and everybody was so much faster. Because yeah. I was going at this really right. slow pace. Yeah, I just did a week on water a few, like a month ago. It was the best thing ever. But yeah. it's not recommended. Like, if, you know, I don't say do it. You've got to work your way up to be able to do And there should be supervision. I didn't because I've done lots of cleansing to get to that point where I could do a week. 
The first week, you don't need supervision. Well, I'm not going to say well, everybody. Right. But the first week, if you're already eating a healthy diet and you're at a healthy weight, the first week shouldn't you should be. But you know, if you're eating a standard American diet and you do a few days on water and all that is yeah. released, that's not advised. Not, so not advised. We, we err on the side of caution because everyone's yeah. on a different journey on that. <laughs> But most, you know, the health conscious people that we're talking to, which is this show, I would say, yeah, I agree that they can, they can do a week and it's great. So, um, great. And let's talk more about the work you're doing to get the message out. You do lots of things over at the website. And again, we've got under the show notes for responsible eating and living.com and, uh, anything else you're doing to get the message out? I know you've got a book coming. Well, I had a chapter in a book called 25 Women Who Have Survived Cancer. Right. And uh, that was with uh, a bunch of big names, Patty Lapone, some oh, other- Oh, that's what I'm looking at here, okay. And it's a really fun story. It's a spiritual story. I recommend getting it and reading it. Um, it's, um, I had some dreams and John Robbins was in one of those, was in the- particular important dream and that led me to a variety of things it's tied to the artist Gustav Klimt's fa famous painting the Adele Blockbauer which the movie Woman in Gold was about but it's it's a fascinating story and it's in that book awesome and again you got the website so before we close out the radio show here Karen anything to say in closing your story is so important because people you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about all this and your journey really shows that there's other ways to look at health and why we do what we do and how to do it right and all the other components. It's so many things. But any words of advice for those that are listening that are, you know, they're juicing and looking to get healthier and, you know, connect the dots. Sure. Well, I'm celebrating my 30 year anniversary as being vegan. I went vegan in June of 1988. Wow. And um, it was an interesting time. I had been vegetarian and I was working on giving up, vegan, giving up dairy. And I had the same kind of thoughts that a lot of people do. How can I give up cheese? How can I give it up butter? I thought I'd made the best New York cheesecake. And I can now make the best New York cheesecake with no dairy, but it's still not a healthy thing to eat. <laughs> and it was a very different time. I was an engineering consultant and I was doing a three-month tour in, in Israel. And I thought that would be a great place to do it because there would always be hummus. <laughs> and, and I wouldn't be bothered by friends and family who were worried about what I was doing because I was eating on my own most of the time. And now Israel is like the number one vegan spot on the planet. I know. I know. They didn't know that back then, 30 years no, ago, when I was indeed. trying to tell everybody about it. But it, it, it was a great place to go vegan. And I've seen so much change in 30 years. Right, let's not even talk about the Impossible Burger. Have you heard about that one? Yes, yes, I've tried it. And Is it good? I mean, I, I well, would never eat that, but I'm like, but everyone's eating it. I, exactly. I, don't know I, would eat I it. have very mixed feelings about it. But the reason why I became a vegetarian was because I didn't yeah. want to kill animals. I didn't want to cause pain and suffering. That's my bottom line. That's my foundation. It just so happens that it's, when done properly, it's the best thing for your health and it's the best thing for the environment. Those are bonuses. And the Impossible Burger is not a whole food. And I, I love what I eat. I love all the foods that I eat and I don't need an Impossible Burger. And we make our own kind of burgers when we want to have a burger made with whole grains and beans and herbs and spices. It's fantastic. The recipes at responsibilityandliving.com. Our Healthy World Burger. It's great, but it's not convenient because you have to make it. And a lot of people, it's just amazing the mindset of many people where they feel like they have to have certain things. And there's plenty of things you don't have to have and your life can be a lot better if you would just let go. But people think they need their burgers. And so, you know, some young, young guys, techies, they got investors going and they're making these burgers. If you've ever tried some of the faux meats, the meat analogs from like Thailand, that these monks have been making for hundreds of years. They're amazing, but they haven't been marketing to put it out there. So theirs doesn't get the press that these burgers do from 
so there's there's not it's not like this groundbreaking it's you know these things have been around for a while they're just marketing it in a new way kind of deal yes Yes. And that's, that's good to know. So I don't have to try it. Thank you for that. You don't. You know, it's also GMO. <laughs> but yeah, you, exactly. Karen Harkless, Karen, I'll let you yeah, get those final words in. It's so many, got to get you back on the show again, because there's so many different things we could talk about. It's very exciting. Thank you. You're, you're I could talk all day about food. And you're I such, do. You really are an inspiration. So yeah, the, the, to just sum it up. Um, and is there a newsletter with that uh, our listeners can subscribe to, to, to hear more from you? You can subscribe to our website. We don't put something out regularly, maybe once a month, maybe not even. And it's pretty much a summary of what's been going on, our new recipes, the radio shows, and if we've been doing anything in particular. We're likely going to start some live events in New York soon, something we haven't done. I used to do a lot of them with EarthSave when I ran EarthSave back in the day, and I'm thinking of starting them up because even though we can reach a lot more people on the internet and it's a beautiful thing, there's nothing like face-to-face -face interaction. I think, and I feel like, like that's important. I love it. And, and I've been vegan 25 years. So when I first went vegan in the early nineties back on the East coast, earth save was like everything. So to know you were so connected yeah. to that, it's just such an honor for me to talk to you. It's no. so exciting. Something I would have never even imagined back then. So Thank you, Karen, so much for being on the show, sharing your journey, your message, your story. I can't wait to try your recipes, to be honest. I'm like, I got to get those and, and download them. Thank you again for being on the show, though. Okay, thank you for having me. This has been phenomenal. Karen Harkless, right here on Juice Crew Radio. I'm Steve Prusak, and we'll see you next time. And if anyone has any other questions here in the group, Diane, thank you for all those questions. Let me see, did we have any other questions come in? And if not... That was fantastic. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad that we had you on the show. This was, I, I'm not sure how I came across your work, but I think I, I stumbled onto your website and I was like, wow, this. this I think I know. So because your request kind of came right after um, the Food Revolution Summit and our Plant Powered and Thriving course. That might have been it. I was one of the Power Hour experts with John and Ocean Robbins. That's probably, and I was like, why don't I know about her? Because... <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah. don't I know about her? She's underground and phenomenal. Diane said this was great. I know. And we're going to get this out to thousands of people all over the world. Great. And I'm so excited to do that, Karen. Thank, Thank you. you. You're, you really are a gift. I, I hope we connect again. I hope our paths connect again. Me too. Okay. Thank well, let me know here. if you're in New York. I will. We, we do come once a year. So I'll okay, let you know we'll when we come. Juice. Thanksgiving, unfortunately, where we're going to be around my wife's family and I have to watch them do what they do. Yes. Which, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. It's not my favorite holiday. Yeah. All thank right. Thank you again, though. Well, thank you. Much love. Bye. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next time.